An American civil rights group calls for an investigation into the death of a Bahamian abroad. Eleven Haitian migrants were allegedly thrown overboard during a journey to the Bahamas. And a forensic audit reveals $10 million in missing hospital drugs and supplies. We've got these stories and so much more on this week's Tribune Top 5. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People has called for a probe into the death of 31-year-old Bahamian Nashano Gilbert after he was shot twice by police stun guns in London, Connecticut. Gilbert was visiting family members when he became a suspect in an attempted carjacking. He died after police used a taser on him, once reportedly during his arrest and later as they tried to subdue him in a police station. Gilbert was a medical school graduate studying to upgrade his license in Canada. His death was the 15th in that state to occur after someone was stunned by a police taser. Although state police are investigating the incident, the NAACP has called for a full investigation by the U.S. Justice Department. The country continues to struggle with the influx of illegal migrants, according to Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell, who this week revealed that at least 100 migrants landed safely in Abaco and evaded capture. Making the announcement in the House of Assembly on Monday, Mr. Mitchell said it was alleged that 11 persons were thrown overboard during the journey from Haiti to the Bahamas. Royal Bahamas Police Force, Defense Force and Immigration Officers have apprehended a little more than 50 migrants in southern Abaco between Sunday and Monday but nearly a hundred more were suspected to be hiding in bushes in Sandy Point. The illegal landing comes as the country gets ready to enforce major changes to its immigration policy, changes that will mandate all persons living in the Bahamas to have a passport of their nationality. The changes could also lead to a ban on people who have previously entered the Bahamas illegally or have been deported from ever obtaining legal status. Concerns over long-standing oil pollution at Clifton Pier returned to the spotlight this week as the government confirmed yet another oil spill at the protected site. Environment Minister Kendra Dorset told the media this week that the government was still unsure of the cause of the latest spill because a report from international consultants was still not complete. However, local officials identified earlier this week that the leak was a mixture of fuel from the nearby Bahamas Electricity Corporation plant and oil from an unknown source. The latest round of concerns over the persistent oil spills at Clifton Pier comes from multi-million dollar southwestern development, Albany. Its marina chief, Derek Roderick, told Tribune Business that oil pollution was not the image the country wanted to portray, given its damaging impact on the high net worth client base the development will attract. A forensic audit into the public hospital's authority revealed that there was a $10 million deficit in pharmacy inventory between the physical count and what was reflected on the Princess Margaret Hospital's information systems last year. When the report was raised by Montague MP Richard Lightbourne in the House of Assembly, Government Ministers Dr. Bernard Nottage and Shane Gibson both placed the blame for the $10 million drug shortfall on the Ingram administration. The report also found out that the PHA's management knowingly refused to enforce best practices to its inventory process, a process which expends approximately $30 million a year. The 92-page report was commissioned on July 13, 2013 and covered a seven-year period. Both former Health Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis and current Minister Dr. Perry Gomez declined to comment on the findings. The report went on to suggest frequent reshuffling of the executive team at the PHA in an effort to reduce the appearance of corruption. Its chairman, Frank Smith, released a statement this week saying that the report was one of several ordered by the authority. He said the reports were all being reviewed by the board and that all matters raised were being fully investigated. As the party continues to struggle with its image, the Free National Movement has decided to hold its national convention this November 21st. The party's central council members voted overwhelmingly in support of the national convention Thursday night as the party struggles to clamp down on the appearance of disharmony. Senator Carl Bethel told the Tribune that the November 21st convention was a deliberate political decision to address the cries within the party for public unity. The near unanimous decision comes on the heels of Deputy Leader Loretta Butler Turner's public statements of disapproval over the convention date. The party's convention was originally scheduled for the first quarter of 2015. However, it was bumped up to next month at an emergency executive committee meeting held on Tuesday. In a leaked internal letter that was sent out to party members and addressed to Dr. Minnis, the Long Island MP expressed her shock that the leader would hold the executive meeting when he knew she would be off the island. In that letter, she told the party leader he was playing a transparently dangerous game by calling the SNAP convention. She later told the Tribune that she was unsure if she would still contest the leadership given the short time frame. At the packed council meeting, Mr. Bethel said, the view of the executive was that the party could not continue with the current public image of discord for another six months. Want to get in on the discussion? Well, here's how you can. Log on to the Tribune's website at www.tribune242.com. Like us on Facebook, Tribune News Network. 
subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune242, or send us a tweet at Tribune242. Don't forget, this month observes breast cancer survivors and preventative measures. So wear pink and go out and support your local organization to raise awareness for treatment, ethical care, and research. That's all for now. I'm Ava Turnquest, and this has been the Tribune's Top 5.